Greetings viewers and welcome to another video here in the channel where I set up my standing desk for remote work. I will start with a review of the current hardware, show you how to choose a tabletop, the table structure, the different types of desk control panels, how I assemble this particular desk and then we move on to cable management, what are necessary materials and how to route the cables. Finally, I will show you how to assemble the dual monitor arm and the final result. Enjoy! This is a 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2019. A rather old mouse, but I love the shape, which is a Logitech MX1000, uh, a Magic Keyboard, uh, an LG Ultrafine 5K, a pair of uh, Bowers and Wilkins uh, MM1 USB speakers for Mac. These are excellent speakers and add to the minimalistic look. This is my chair. So I have this, <laughs> this padding over here. And we have a bunch of cables running here, including a USB hub over there, Type-C. Over the top here, you can find the bank screen bar plus. As you can see, some regulation, brightness, and color temperature of the light. Uh, I leave it on, 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 on automatic. The automatic has an ambient light sensor that will adjust the, the intensity of the light. Over there, you have my improvised solution for uh, putting my feet to try to have a 90 degree angle in my knees when I work because this desk is a little bit higher than the, what is suited for me because you, you should have a 90 degree angle in your um, elbows and approximately 90 degree angle also in your knees for an ergonomic uh, posture. And here I have the start of the show, so to speak. This tabletop is a 120 by 60 by 2.5 centimeter thickness. Uh, I, I remember seeing on Amazon this was the smallest tabletop, but uh, my house is small, so I need to make a, a, a small setup. They have other, other sizes, you can choose the tabletop even from IKEA. Take a look around, IKEA tabletops seem to be very popular for these standing desk uh, setups. Well, but I decided to just order everything uh, because IKEA at this time was closed because of the pandemic, so I couldn't actually take a look at anything. Uh, and another thing to consider is that if you buy the tabletop from the company, uh, they will give you um, the, the product is supposed to go with their structure. So they do things like they pre-drill pre the holes um, where the structure will fit into the tabletop. In short, you will pay more, but you have a guarantee that they go well together and you don't have to drill the holes uh, for setting up the desk. Uh, there are several characteristics. The first thing is dual or single motor. The dual motor, that is, we have two legs and there will be one motor responsible in each one of the legs of the structure. In the cheaper models, you have one motor that powers one leg and then there is a shaft that provides power to raise the other leg simultaneously. More like a, you know, like a transmission shaft. This is more, more economical, of course, but uh, for me, the, the dual motor has some significant advantages. The first one is the noise. That was the determining factor for me to choose the dual motor standing desk, the, the frame. Because when you have dual motor, the noise is much lower. And the point of a standing desk is that you raise it and you lower it several times throughout the day. If you are working in an office with other people or in a situation like at home, where there can be people asleep, for example, different schedules, you need to account for that. Some of these characteristics between the most expensive ones and cheaper, um, each one of them uh, are 30 euros, but when you pile on the 30 euros for this, then 40 euros for that, for each difference, then it can be a significant difference for you that you can put to better investment in, in another part of your setup.
there is a second factor, which is a higher uh, weight capacity. If you are going to have a dual, motor set, a dual monitor setup, um, triple monitor setup, you need to sum up the weight of all your elements that you're going to put on top of the desk and consider if the weight rating is adequate for you. You need to consider the, the specifications of the manufacturer because this, the tabletop itself, also has a weight and it can be around 10 to 12 kilos, just the tabletop. Then you're going to put monitors and you're going to put laptops and frames and all this kind of stuff that will go on top, that all will add up. Okay, uh, and this can put additional strain on the motor that you choose. The dual motor gives me some more peace of mind because I know the weight rating I believe for this desk is around 125 kilos, so more than enough to, to support anything I want to throw at it. I assume that um, a dual motor desk will have now two points of failure instead of one because either of the, if either of the motors uh, fails then the, the desk will be worthless because only one leg will be able to go up or in down, so you need to account for that. But at the same time, if the two motors are working in tandem, there will be less wear on each of them, so they will last a little longer. So ah, be, take that as you as you consider the best. When you choose a frame, you need to consider the number of sections that the frame has. Some frames are dual section, other frames are triple section. It refers to the number of sections in which each of the feet is split up. Once it opens, it opens up like a stack. Two is the, the lowest number of sections, just one tube inside another. If you have three sections, you have three tubes, one inside each other, okay? And these three sections give you a wider range of adjustment. You can have the desk go lower if you have three sections and also higher. So it's more expensive, three sections, uh, but it will give you a higher weight rating uh, and a higher uh, adjustability. The control panel that you choose can have more or less functions. Uh, I first looked at the IKEA standing desk, I understand the electronics of the IKEA standing desk are rather weak because the IKEA standing desk only has a button to go up and a button to go down. And for me this doesn't suit because you need to stay focused on your goal by buying a standing desk. If your goal is to be switching position often during the day because of your back or because you know to avoid RSI that you need to consider that if you need to press and adjust the desk you need to be measuring manually the height and you spend you waste time on that so after a while after the novelty wears off you will tend to stay in the same position because you don't want to be you are focused on your work you don't want to be adjusting your desk all, every time right so you need some sort of memory that remembers the position in which the desk is and if you have more than one person at your home using the desk you should have the ability to memorize the positions so that you use another person can come and can have a possibility to adjust a third position for example this electronics has adjustment up and down has height measurement with an lcd display has memories and it has also a reminder that will remind you to switch positions in a preset interval as well as a child lock all these things combined will make it easier for me to actually use the desk to take advantage of its ability to go up and down decoration is a very personal subject i, I chose the white structure and i chose a white tabletop why white because i read and it makes sense to me that white will emphasize whatever you have on top of the desk some people prefer if they have like the new imax with the colors and the front bezel that are front bezels that are white you want to have a, a white desk so that everything blends together so it's like the computer disappears more or less for me i like the idea of a white desk so that everything up to the tabletop will be white and everything on top of the tabletop will be space gray black you know dark colors because it emphasizes my hardware. Under the table, I want everything to be invisible, to blend with the wall. I want to avoid the cable situation. I want to make whatever is under the table invisible. Your tabletop, your legs, should match whatever plastics and cable setup that you do under the table. The cables are undesirable. You don't want to see cables. Let's open them up and start putting them together.
there are some rubber grommets everywhere. So this is interesting because the tabletop will not sit directly against the metal. It will help dampen any vibration on the tabletop. So there are two different parts, two different halves. One has this uh, shape here and the other has, uh, has nothing. The control box and the control panel will always go on this side. Wherever you put your desk, the, the box will be always here and the control panel can be either here or here. It cannot go over there. The rails to unite two halves of the structure. the inside there is a lower distance on one side than on the other so the lower distance should point upwards so far the packaging seems to be suitable. As you can see, there is packing all the way around the tabletop. It suffered some blows. I hope that the inside is still okay. But as you can see, some sturdy packing on the corners. Top is covered with uh, protective elements even in the corners. I have seen several reviews on Amazon where people criticize that they get tabletops that are damaged in shipping. You have not only styrofoam but also in the corners some very stiff foam. It's really hard and it's all around the, the tabletop. Tabletop comes pre-drilled for uh, the same uh, structure that the same manufacturer sells, and there is a cutout to pass cables. Just remember to put the side on the frame with the two notches on the side where you want to install the control box. Don't use the machine for this, or you can break the plastic. So let's install the box. Cable on one side, cable on the other. Slide it there. Now one power cable will go on one side, the other power cable goes on this one. And we have start our cable management here. The Ethernet cable goes into the connection like that. This one will go like that. There is an extender cable because the, then in that case the control box will be locked to one side of the structure so the manufacturer includes an extender cable for those scenarios. Since my tabletop is quite small I don't have the need to use this extender. And now we will cover up the cables. Now we'll start the odyssey of uh, making sure that I have all the cables properly organized under the table and with only this box visible. Here I have a USB cable, 2 meters length extension by Anchor and it is USB-C to USB-C. This supports up to 100 watt uh, charging. Here I have some velcro tape for the cable organization. Again, this, these are like cable ties but with velcro. This is a charger for Macs and anything you, you want to, to charge with this. It has two USB-C ports and two USB-A ports as well. A gallium nitride technology charger, which means it can power up to 100 watts, uh, provide 100 watts of charge in a quite compact package. Here I've got another male to female USB-C adapter. This will allow me to extend 
the, the cables uh, to run my hub in a hidden position inside the box and this, this hub is by Satechi, the Satechi uh, Pro Hub and it has several plugs including an Ethernet port. Here I've got a couple of Thunderbolt cables and these are Thunderbolt 4 which means they support 40 gigabit per second. There are two types of Thunderbolt cables uh, that I could find. Most of them support Thunderbolt 3 and up to a maximum of uh, 20 GB, gigabit, gigabit per second. These are the top of the line. This cable cost me 50 euros each cable. I need two because I'll be running two monitors. Uh, one of them is USB-C, another one is Thunderbolt, but I decided to put already two Thunderbolt cables for future proofing if I ever have two Thunderbolt monitors. And here I have a cable management solution for running the cables and it has, notice that it is sliced and it has many different points. I will run it along the back of the table so that I can pull out the cables from which point of the, of the ruler that I want. Uh, you will see some cable management solutions like this, which are just a bunch of clamps where you can run your cables and you, you outline them, but I didn't want the cables to be visible at the same time. Some cable management solutions only have holes in certain positions. This allows you full flexibility to pull out cables wherever you need all along the line with a complete flexibility and then hide them so, it, so the, the desk looks good. Here I am making some modifications to the cable organization kit, particularly the box, so that I can run some velcro tape around those slits. Here I am uh, cleaning the shaving so that no one gets cut. And here I'm test fitting the cable ties. This will add the strength that the box needs to stay closed after I add all the cables and uh, chargers. Now it's time to prepare the surfaces for sticking the organization kit to the bottom of the table and starting to test fit some cables, uh, running them along the organization kit. I run some rubbing alcohol to degrease all the surfaces and stick the box with some assembly tape. This is dual side tape that is quite strong by 3M, press it on a little bit, that's the final result. I start organizing the cables, power plugs, uh, chargers, USB extensions, this is a process of trial and error. I run the hub, uh, keep an extension of USB for charging laptops whenever they are not connected at the monitor. And as you can see, it's really a process of patience and trial and error. Again and again, adjust this. This video is sped up quite a lot, uh, more than 20 times. So you can see that this is a, a lengthy process that takes some patience. Here we can see the virtues of the uh, cable organization uh, rails that means that you can run your cables and pass them along through different holes uh, to suit the needs of your layout i run one cable per hole to make sure everything looks neat and now i close the box in this setup i also included a dual monitor arm by amazon basics comes in a nice box with good instructions. All the parts are clearly lab labeled out, uh, including the screws. I start by assembling the base, sticking on some anti-scratch stickers into the clamps. Clamping the arm to the center of the table, you can adjust this to your needs. Now I run cables for power and the Thunderbolt cables of the two monitors. The hinges will go 
along the arm with the cables in the middle and then there is a clamp to hold it in place after you are satisfied with the height. I recommend test, fi test fitting this so that the top of your monitor will be aligned with your eyes. Now we have here some cable management uh, system. I am putting one facing the bottom and one facing the top because the cables will perform a downwards curve and then again point to the top. After it is finished, you are happy with the height, you lock it in place with a nut like that. Comes with this handy Allen key, you lock it in place. Now it's time to set up the visa mounts. It comes with some nice thumb screws. Lock them in place using the Phillips screwdriver that comes included in the box and now we are going to clamp them in place there is a, a spring that should be pointing up so that it locks the monitor in place you place your monitors and lock them in after adjusting the angles and distances Now it's a matter of plugging in the power and Thunderbolt cables and run any other cables that you may have. In this case I'm running the cables for my speakers. Everything runs along those rails and make sure to uh, set up one cable per hole for the best results. After the cables are all inside you can close up the rails with a protective cover and I'm setting up here my monitor light. The cable also runs a USB-C connection, so it runs quite neat. And here is the final result. We can see even the underside of the table. Those are the only cables that are visible. That's the ugliest part of this setup. So the overall result is quite pleasing, I would say. The desk works as intended, a single cable will power everything, so the desk is free to move up and down without any cables getting tangled. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like and perhaps subscribe to the channel.